I appreciate you all having me today, all right? I'm looking forward to talking to you all. But first of all, let me ask you all a question. How many of y'all know who, what a hero is? Raise your hand. Raise your hand high if you know what a hero is. I heard you talk about Gandhi. You can raise your hand up higher than that. Gandhi was a hero, right? All right. So this is what I want to talk to you all about. What if I told you that everybody in this room can be a hero? That'd be great. And this is how, and this is the reason I'm bringing this up. Because the gifts, the skills, and the talents that you all possess can be used to help somebody else. You could be a hero in somebody else's life. And that person can go on to be a hero in somebody else's life. Now let me tell you all why I'm saying this, okay? Now I'm a very good communicator. I'm a public speaker. I do this profession, and I love to do this. And I get the opportunity to work with a lot of people in juvenile jails, people that's been in trouble. But it's my passion. I love this because I can be a hero in these kids' life. But communication is not the reason that I believe you can use your gifts, your skills, and your talents to be a hero in somebody else's life. What has allowed me to have this belief is the fact that I work in the healthcare field. I know that you say you want to work in the healthcare field. I work in the healthcare field. And what I am is an exercise physiologist. I work with people who are sick with cancer, HIV, diabetes, you name it. But let me tell you all what happened in 2009. I used to be in charge of this exercise clinic, right, in 2009. The exercise clinic was about the size of this room. It was always very cold. And then one day I was sitting in there by myself and this lady walks in. She's very slim. She has black hair and she has a beautiful smile. Her hair looks like you young ladies right here. And she walks up towards me and she says, how you doing, sir? My name is Leslie. I said, how you doing, Miss Leslie? My name is Jean. Say, Mr. Jean, I, I have a newborn baby, and I just got diagnosed with stage four cancer. Can you help me? I said, ma'am, you know, what, what is your son's name? How, how do you want me to help you? Well, I heard you one of the best at what you do. I need to exercise so I can be here for my little baby, my baby boy. I said, ma'am, I will do everything I can. Now imagine for a second, if you were in the healthcare field and some lady came up to you and said, hey, sir, or hey, ma'am, can you help me so I can be there for my newborn baby? Wouldn't you be kind of scared or thinking in the back of your mind you probably cannot live up to this challenge? How many of y'all be a, a little bit afraid of taking on this challenge? Raise your hand. <laughs> I was terrified. I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know if I could do this. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. So that's the little voice in my mind. That's what it was saying to me. So I decided to take on this challenge, right? I was very enthusiastic about it. So I said, ma'am, I can help you. So we started the next week. Now, when somebody has going through cancer and they have chemo in their body, chemo is like poison in the body. It's like somebody put a thousand snakes by their leg and let them bite them and it's going through their body and their veins. So what happens? The person become very weak. They become very tired. Part of my job, what I had to do is get her to exercise so she could sweat this chemo out of her system, right? So I decided to have her do some jumping jacks. Y'all know I do jumping jacks? Okay, I'm standing on the right side. She's standing on the left. So we get in this exercise clinic, right? I say, okay, Leslie, we're going to do jumping jacks. So I started doing my jumping jacks, right? I was doing my jumping jacks. I was like, come on, Leslie, do it with me. She was like, I can't, Jen. I'm too tired. I can't do it. I was like, come on, Leslie. Come on, what's your son's name? What's your son's name? She says, my son's name is Victor. I say, like, wow, Victor. That's my middle name. I say, like, what does Victor mean? Why did you call your son Victor? I call him Victor, Gene, because it means victorious conqueror. I say, Leslie, why don't you become the victorious conqueror for your son? Why don't you do these jumping jacks with me so you can be there for them? So we started doing the jumping jacks. I was going. And every, every month after month, she was going a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more because she wanted to be there for her victor. She could barely get up. But month after month, she was able to do those jumping jacks. And then one day, she walked into the exercise clinic. I was sitting in there by myself. She said, Gene, I have some news for you. Today is my last day in the exercise. And I was devastated 
Because I've worked with this lady month after month. And now I'm thinking to myself, is she dying? Because when you have cancer patients, you don't know if the day you see them may be the last day you ever see them. A month went by. Six months went by. A year went by. Three years went by. Four years, five years. I have no idea what happened to Leslie, so I'm concerned because I'm like, wow, what if I fail? Miss Leslie, her son will grow up without a mother. I was sitting in my room one day and I was on Facebook. I know everybody in here know how to use Facebook. I can see it on y'all faces. I was on Facebook and I get this email in my inbox and it says, Leslie. She sends me a message, she says, Gene, I wrote a book. I wrote a book so I can inspire other cancer patients. And I also want you to know something, Gene. I wrote about you in my book. Wait, really? This is Leslie. Victorious. Victorious. Wow. Because I was willing to use my gifts, my skills, and my talents to be a hero in somebody else's life. Now she's using her gifts, her skills, and her talents to be a hero in so many other people's lives. So my question to you, what will you use your gifts, your skills, and your talents for? I notice you're a very charismatic, charismatic speaker. You have a natural gift for speaking. I see that in you. And I see a lot of those skills in a lot of you in here. You want to go into the healthcare field, Neil. That's an opportunity for you to inspire people. You want to do things with your life, your life, your life. The question you have to ask yourself, are you going to use your life, your gifts, your skills, and your talents to inspire other people? Because you never know. Somebody may write a book. Somebody may write a card or they may even do a movie. And because you was willing to be a hero in their life, they'll be inspired to be a hero in other people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.